praise God and we thank him for continuing part two of intro to denomination doctrine, denomination doctrine. And we're just going to review Matthew 7 and then continue the word. Praise God. Father, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your people on today that they return to receive the continuation of this message. Bless them and keep them as they open up their ears and their minds to hear and do accordingly. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Chapter 7, and we're coming from 7, 21 to 23, which says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Have you not heard that in these churches? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. This is Jesus talking. Jesus prophesied this. And in the end, God will say, I never knew you. We are to look up all the people that don't do the Father's will. Jesus tells us to part from me, okay? Depart from me. So when I said we are to look up all the people that don't do the, the Father's will, if you are reading your word, you are able to rightly define whether or not a person is working according to God's will or not. We are to test the Spirit by the Spirit. And if the spirit is not right, Jesus tells us to depart from them. We must know now. And let's turn to Matthew 7.15, which says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravished wolves. Jesus told us that. The prophets told us this. The apostles told us this, and yet we still will not open up our words so that we can learn from our, for ourselves what God wants of us. Beware of false prophets. Would you point out a false prophet? Would you? Or would you be afraid? Elijah did. Elijah met them all on the mountain. 450 prophets he met on the mountain and he challenged them to a duel and the duel was if your God is God you will take it and build the altar and put a sacrifice on there I will build the altar and put a sacrifice on there and the one who God consumed the sacrifice with fire is the one and only true and living God. Well, we know how that story ended. Elijah, God, put the fire to the sacrifice, and then Elijah turned around and killed 450 of Jezebel's prophets. Now, God ain't calling us to kill anybody, okay? He's not calling causing us to make war with anyone he says vengeance is mine during this time in the new testament we are to allow him to take hold but our job is to expose the full prophet so that the children of god will be able to live and learn of the true and living god amen and I don't mean you got to stand outside some church and say, oh, this is not the right um, um, 
church of the true and living God. So it says, beware of the four prophets. Now, you may say, well, we don't know of any four prophets. And I will say, really? I want to show you something. Mussolini was a fourth prophet. Hitler was a fourth prophet. And they were not quote unquote prophets. But the bottom line, anyone that is trying to cause havoc and chaos and turn brother against brother, mother against daughter, is a false prophet. Because Jesus said in the last day, that's going to happen anyway. Father against son. That's going to happen. If the family is mature enough, they will know this and then they will come together as a family to work it out. But I'm going to tell you from my own experience, from my own family, when you find they do not want to receive the truth, you have to come out of them. You have to walk away because they will bring you to the pit with them. Amen. They become bitter because Satan jumps into your mother, your father, your brothers, your children. And you have to know when to keep it moving. To come out, leave them, pray that God delivers them from their wicked, evil ways. Leave it at the altar and continue to worship and praise God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. These apostles or false ministers look like the rest. They look like the real thing. They sound like the real thing. Amen. And they may even preach and teach right out the Bible. But they also have a way of distorting the Bible. I always say, look at their lifestyle. You ain't got to go to their house to see what they're doing. But if you look around the church, I came to a church one time. And when I went to that church, I found out the leader of the church, the pastor, the prophet of the church, had a wife at home who was ill. And he had two girlfriends in the congregation. Amen. When you hear things like this, you got to come out of the church. You can't stay there because you're not going to get the true word. Sure, you go there and you listen to him and he gets what? He's making you feel good, but he's also corrupting your spirit. You're feeling good is how you're selling your soul to the enemy because he himself has placed a curse on you to stay there, to tithe, to give your offering. Amen? This is what God wants me to share today, what I've seen in the spirit and in the natural, how the men and women of God actually bind up God's people where they cannot leave that church and many a times they'll leave the church and they'll get sick and they'll start sick because they left the church which is true but if they don't come back to the church they will die and that's the curse that was placed on them by their former leader it's time for men and women to hear the truth this may be the last word that God lets me preach Holy Spirit, I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yet, is he rightly divining the word? Is he rightly dividing the word? If he's not living the truth, 
He's not rightly divining the word, dividing the word. He can't divide the word for himself. He can't help himself. So how can he help you? Praise God. And that's when we, even in my teachings, I said we're to cover our leader. We're to cover our leader's flaws. Yes. Yes. David did it up until the time the, the Saul kept trying to kill him and came so close each time to kill him and David had to leave. And that's what happens when you are around a false leader. They will throw darts at you until they kill you. This is scripture. I just shared with you words in the Bible with King Saul and David. And I've seen this. Myself, I've witnessed it. Where the prophet killed his whole church. Amen. He started with the leaders. And then it moved to the congregation. And it kept running out of town to preach here or preach overseas. The spirit realm is real. And many of these false ministers are into oboe. They're into Santeria. They're into all sorts of evil doings to bind you, to blind you from knowing the truth. Thank you, Father. Yet you have all these different denominational groups preach all different messages. It does not take a Solomon to know something is wrong. I have shown you that when the spirit is moving in the house, the same word will be preached in New York, Boston, London, Germany at the same time. And this has been my experience. God let me see this, that this is how I know that the word is true from God. My girlfriend can call me from Virginia or South Carolina and say, this was the message that the pastor preached today. And I could agree with her. Well, that was the message that was preached here today. And then I know that she's in a Bible teaching church and that the Holy Spirit is in that church ministering the word to them amen we must know this saints this is so important that we understand what god has done in the spirit realm yes lord thank you jesus hallelujah so how can this matter be settled you must be honest enough and sincere enough to forget about everything you were taught and go back to the Word of God and see if it is in the Bible. Is it Bible-based? And we are only to keep what is Bible-based. That's the only way to know for sure. Are we rightly divining, dividing the word of truth? Praise God. Jesus said, those false teachers are not there in sheep's clothing, so you and I would do well to believe them. Amen. He didn't say that. We're not to believe them, even though I could say to you that we know they come with some truth. Praise God. I've seen too many men and women behind the pulpit that are practicing evil. And because of that, God took me out of the church, had me captive, a prisoner in this church 
because he opened up a church in my home. And I was captive for over four years. So the Holy Spirit could lead and guide me and train me. So when I do go out to preach, I will preach what God wants me to preach. Even though it will mean my life. Amen. Now go to 2 Thessalonians 2, 8. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. And we're going to read 8 through 12, which says, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the workings of Satan with all power, sign, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusions that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, you know, and I know, I've preached this before, but I have not preached it like I am today. Notice, the Lord said, Satan is out to deceive us. People who will not receive the truth, the workings of error, God is not going to force them He's going to allow them to do that because he gave us freedom of choice. Turn to 1 John 4 and 1. That's 1 John 4 and 1. I keep saying this because I, I found this to be so true. God is a gentleman and he's not going to do anything, you know, against our will. 1 John 4 and 1 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Well, if God didn't want us to know this, why would he write this in his Bible? We must have Bible authority for what we do. Not man's authority, but Bible authority for what we do. And there's two sorts of authority. The first is God and the second is man. Which one supersedes which? God's authority. Praise God. And we're going back to Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 5 21 it says test all things hold fast what is good praise God prove all things don't just let someone come up to you and say this is this and that is that prove it go into the word if you don't know your word get a concordance you look up one word. Sure, it takes time. But it's worth it to know if that is truly coming from the word of God or if it's coming from man. Amen. I don't know everything. I say I do research all the time. I have a concordance. I thank God for my father-in-law from my second husband bought us a, a, a one of those big concordance. You know, while he was going to school for theology. Praise God. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
giving thanks to God the Father through him. You find many people do not want us to go from scripture to scripture to scripture. And yet, if we don't go from scripture to scripture, how are we going to really know what God is saying, especially for today? This word is for today. 1 Peter 4.11 says, Thank you, Jesus. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracle of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the denomination, no, not denomination, dominion forever and ever. Amen. And this is why you read alongside of the minister that's reading so it will help you pronounce words. Because I tell you, I really have problems pronouncing a lot of words. And since I had went to the dentist and had dental work, I really need a speech therapist now so that I can move my mouth correctly. I find that I do have problems, even more so than I used to when I was younger. Because I got to get used to my new teeth. Amen? So speak in the oracles of God, only what comes out of the Bible. And that's what men need to do. What do you think? Am I making this up? You know, some people may say, oh, well, you're jumping from here and you're jumping from there. And because you're jumping from here and there, you're putting the words together. But we already understand that the Bible also is written in code. You learned that from the Da Vinci um, Code. You know, remember, the devil gives us, he brings us some truth. Okay? He really does bring us some truth. Not all truth. Because he does not want us to be wise in our own understanding of what God is doing, especially in this time, you know, especially in this time. Why? Because he knows his time is short and he wants to make sure each one of us go to the pit with him. Amen. Turn to Philip. So, I can't even say this. So, we're going to say Philippians. There we go. 3.16, which says, Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. So, here, God is letting us know that we're supposed to be in the same denomination. We're all supposed to be practicing the same thing we're all supposed to be practicing the same rule we're all supposed to be teaching the same things we're all supposed to have the same revelation from god but because man is who man is god had to give this one a revelation and let this one write it down so that we could have some truth amen whether or not they believe it or not this is why we have so many books, so many authority figures on certain subjects. Amen. God will have a man take it and practice, study spiritual gifts. And then he'll write a book about spiritual gifts to help us further along. Because basically the Bible t tells us in a church, we're supposed to have an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, an evangelist, and a teacher. Why? Because if we have those five people in the church, those five people, if they're mature in the word of God, they will help mature the church and keep the church in balance. 
in a balance so that they can grow in the kingdom of God and know the truth and the truth shall set them free. But we don't find that in our churches today. And that's a big problem. Why do we need these five people? Because these five people are supposed to be able to talk to each other. They're supposed to be close enough that they talk to each other. They rebuke each other. And they know that it's a marriage between them that will build the church. Amen? You don't see them fighting and then, oh, I'm breaking up. I got to lead a church. They learn how to reconcile it reconciliate between themselves for the benefit of the congregation because the congregation are like children and they are the parents to teach them that's how you know a house was set in order established by the one and true and living God amen so we're supposed to walk by the same rules The same principles that God has established in the word, in the Bible. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know. Let's turn to Hebrews 8 and 5. Hebrews 8 and 5. And let's see what it says. Shall we? Who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle for he said see that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain so here we know that God gave Moses the pattern for the church while he was on the mountain and when people have a problem with the pattern Moses wrote the pattern in the book. Jesus wrote the pattern in this book. He showed us how to evangelize people. He showed us how to teach discipling people. He showed us the way to go. In fact, that's why when Jesus walked the earth, the disciples, his ministry was called the way, not Christianity, not not Christians. Romans changed it to Christianity, Christians, meaning men and women that walk in the way of Christ. And Christ means the Messiah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, Hebrews 8, 5, making sure we do all things according to the pattern Whose patent? God's patent. And that's why we went through a lesson on the priestly garments. So you and I can understand God has a patent for everything and he has not changed. If it's not in the word, then it's not so. Amen. So we're going to end this lesson on today. Father God, we thank you for your word on today thank you for allowing us to understand that you have no division in the body of christ the body of christ is supposed to be one one church one baptism in jesus christ our lord and so you are not pleased with all these denominations you're pleased with one church And that is the church of the living God that study to show themselves approved by your word in your Bible. Amen. Father, we also thank you for the people that are willing to learn, keep them focused, and we also thank you for the peace of Jerusalem for we know time is short and we just want you to come quickly in Jesus mighty name amen amen amen